Hey Scott, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I'm going to wait till you guys get back up on here. Alrighty, get back up on here. Let me know. I'm going to wait till you guys get back on here. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> y'all know when I flew this like this, y'all already know that's God. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. All right. So I'm going to go. My magic number is when, when I see a certain number, I'll be like, okay, let's go. So. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. First of all, I just want to thank God for you all. I thank God. I, I'm, I'm, I gotta be obedient. Hold on. Let me pray over y'all. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everybody that comes on this line, everybody that will come on this live or listen later, Father God, I pray that you strengthen them, Father God. I pray that you bless them, Father God. I pray that you bless them with wisdom and discernment from on high, Father God. I pray that they become obedient, Father God, and dismantled from this world, Father God, like never before. I've come against the spirit of temptation, lust, fear, rage, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you cover our families, Father God, our children, especially going back to school. God, I pray that you cover us, God, like never before. Father God, move, move on our behalf, Father God. I pray, Father God, for restoration, restoration and revelation. Give it to them, Father God, so that they may know how to answer, Father God. They may know how to stand in this hour. They may know how to present themselves before you, Father God, like never before in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. I decree and declare to be so, Father God, as a servant of the God. Of God. I know that I I'm not worthy, but just say the word and I shall be. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, let us say amen, amen, amen. And I plead the blood of Jesus over you all. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me go ahead and tell y'all the second problem. Thus said the Lord. And I'm going to walk this thing out. Praise God, praise God. Okay, this going to be a heavy one. Just like the other one was. God say to, oh God, as and let me go ahead and do this disclaimer. Every marriage is not of God. I don't care what you say I can, and, and bring any scholar, anybody that's versed. It could be a pastor, preacher, apostle. Bring them. I can show them. Every marriage is not ordained of God and, and uh, well God don't want us to divorce so you're telling me that God wants somebody to beat you and possibly kill you that have been done and vice versa because men abuse women and women abuse men all right God says stop choosing your own mate stop doing that most of you are choosing people because they're fine got a good credit score um you know the vibe is there y'all look good um if y'all in a club y'all you know what time it is if you're high everything look good when you're high and, until you come down yeah i say what i say let me tell y'all something pure men and women of god do not date i don't care what you say i can prove that biblically Pure men and women of God do not date. Genesis, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Leah, Leah and Jacob. They were all, but back in the day, this is what they would do. The, fa the fathers and the mothers, they would pick a suitable mate for their children. One that actually served God. As a matter of fact, that's what happened with Samson. Let me walk this thing out. Samson was a Nazarene. When Nazarene was actually, he was anointed from birth. Not like John and and um, not like John from the womb, but he was anointed by God to be the mighty man of God he was. So he couldn't just pick any kind of woman. But wait a minute. What was he attracted to? Strange women. Men and women of God, you will be attracted to strange women strange men i mean they'll be looking so fine you <laughs> y'all know how y'all act don't play with me and, and, and knowing that that's not of god but you'll pretend 
just to have somebody you pretend just to keep somebody as a matter of fact i'm going all out this morning so you might as well tag and share i've seen it with my own eyes as a matter of fact i used to do it back in the day you know the person don't want you but guess what you're willing to freak them into it sex them into it pay them into it just don't leave me just don't leave me i don't want to be alone god says stop that and that's why you're crying and then when you go down the street to Suzy Q house, mm -hmm, then you want to fight Suzy Q. Yeah, I said it. First of all, you're out of order. This is protocol. Stay single until God sends you somebody. All right. That's the first thing. God, I, I, God knows what you want. But sometimes what you think you're ready for, you're not really ready for because there are some times where God has sent you that man. You didn't want him. Ooh, ooh, he, he not thug enough. He, he not rough enough. He not, and vice versa. Oh, oh she, 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 she too homely. Or she too, I'm talking this morning. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me go ahead and tell you about my title. Quit marrying people that God have not processed. The prophet Hagar was an example. God made him marry the prostitute. And every time he would look for her, she would be out there doing what she do. And God says, I get, I, I, I make you do that because I want to show you how Israel do me. I love them. God loves us. And yet every time we look, and I'm going to say some words that's in the Bible, so don't come at me because if you come at me, I'm on one today. Today is the day. We go a whoring after other women, go a whoring after other gods, as if God is not God. Let me tell you why it's important to process. And I'm going to use me as an example. In 2012, when I married my ex-husband, I knew he wasn't ready. I knew it. But I thought, and, and I honestly thought that, I love God. I know that Bible. I can do Bible study with him. I can do this. I can do it. Notice what I, I can do this. I, 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 I was kind of way skinnier. I was finer. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I, I got this. I got this, God. I got this. But I promise you, God is my witness from day one. I heard God say, no, Deanna. God, I got this. I could do this. I got this. Honey, I didn't have nothing. I didn't have nothing. That man took me through it. Okay? That man took me through it. And it wasn't that he was a bad person. He was not processed. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching this morning and ain't nothing y'all can tell me because I know what I'm talking about. So what happens is it's not that they're bad people. And y'all want to get on Facebook and, and just, 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 oh, what y'all do to each other after y'all break up is just, it's not even right. I've never done that to that man. Not in, not in public. I'll say the things we went through. But to this day, I will never do that to him because that's not what he deserved. He deserved prayers. <laughs> I just said something. When a person is not processed, what do you think they're going to do? What they always been doing? You have to allow the spirit of God to process that person. You can't do it. Uh oh, I'm going in for the grown folks. Some of you think that something was ever between your legs is gold because y'all be thinking that y'all can just keep them with that iron line and that's men and women y'all be acting like y'all got that good good yeah i say what i said i ain't got time to play with y'all because y'all crazy i know how to keep it okay and then let me ask you a question man of god woman of god after that we're out and y'all don't have nothing in common and the holy ghost not keeping y'all together what's gonna happen is that why they go to down the street to Ray Ray? And is that why you go to Big Booty Trudy? Because now you have nothing substance. You don't have any substance. You don't have no foundation because you didn't do it God's way. Because y'all want to do what y'all want to do. And when y'all do what y'all want to do, you get what you get, says God. Whatever is birthed in the flesh, says God, you got to obtain that. God is not obligated. And then y'all be crying, God, why? God never told you to get with that person. You did that. But what God put together by the spirit of God, God is obligated to obtain it. But if God didn't put that together, that ain't on God. Y'all pastors and preachers need to quit lying to people. Because then y'all say, well, you know, it, it, then y'all go into Corinthians. The husband is sanctified through the wife. And the wife is sanctified through the husband. For how long? Because my Bible says, what's in you, 
gonna come out of you. It, oh Lord, <laughs> I'm on one. If you was a whole then, she gonna be a whole now. Come on, somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Unless God process her and vice versa for the man. You can say what you want to say. Y'all stop playing that game. Let God process people before you marry them. How do you do that? Protocol, you're supposed to go to counseling. But y'all don't even do that. Then we're going to just get married. You know, we love each other. Y'all send out y'all little invitations, whatever. And then when the top sit turns, then y'all want, when you come pray for us, pastor, you didn't even ask God. So now you want to talk to pastor. Pastor not, does not surprise, suppresses God. And not only that, you didn't help up that person growth because you got with them when you weren't supposed to. And I don't care what nobody say. Let's talk real. You know when it's not right. You know, as a matter of fact, let's go here. What course are you going on right now? If you stealing, you know, sooner or later you're going to get caught, right? If you cheating, you know, sooner or later you're going to get caught, right? If you robbing your job, nickel and diamond, you know your fate sooner or later, right? We're talking about the course of a life right now. Whatever you doing, we all know what course we on. You don't have to tell everybody, but if you're doing right or wrong, you know that whatever you're doing is coming back to you, right? Because that's called the course of life. Everybody know what course we are. Quit playing that game. If you smoking cigarettes, you know sooner or later you're going to have a health problem. If you're drinking alcohol like an alcoholic, what you, what you think going to happen sooner or later? Quit playing. You understand what I'm saying? Hold on, y'all. They're trying to turn off my computer. Hold on. Okay, I got it. Wow. So, all I'm saying is that God, God loves us. God wants us to be happy. God says, I want you to have life and life more abundantly. But it's just like in Deuteronomy. Choose blessings or choose curses. You can't do what you want to do. I know everybody thinks they can. And guess what? You're going to get what you get. I promise you. But what God told me to tell you today is, let people process. If I could go back to 2012 and I met my ex-husband, because he was not a bad man. He just wasn't processed. And being the woman of God, I, I could do it. You can't do what God could do. I pray for that man. I pray that he is blessed. I pray that he finds a good wife. I pray for him. Y'all don't do that. Y'all get y'all y'all want to speak curses. I hope this happens. Even on Facebook. Even on Facebook, even when y'all get mad at somebody, I'm I'm just going, I'm coming back around. Y'all need to stop that. That's curses. And guess what? When you curse out, it must come back to you. Oh, uh, y'all thought it would go to somebody else. You ain't God. The only person that can curse somebody is God. You can't curse nobody, but you can curse yourself. Come on, somebody. Now nah, that's scripture in case some of y'all don't know. Because y'all be on Facebook. Oh, y'all. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be making me laugh. I say they just curse they stuff and don't even know it. So say so, so say trying to curse the other person. It is so important for a person to be processed. Because what is process? Process is maturing. You want to know why your husband don't treat you right? Because he's a man child. Oh, I'm about to go here. They're not gonna like me. You know John Gray. Everybody heard of John Gray, and I'm not trying to gossip. I'm using him as an example. You remember when he cheated on his wife last year, and everybody talked, and he bought a Lamborghini, I guess the whatever, whatever. So then he cheated what a couple of months ago. That's a man child. And then they had the audacity to say, "Well, the girl was talking to the 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 child in him." You know what? You know how people just fall down on the floor. I wish I could just fall down on the floor, but I, I probably, I can't get up if I do that. Stop playing this game, Mr. John Gray. You have a lust spirit. Hallelujah! I ain't got time to play with you. You got a lust spirit and you need deliverance. Y'all better stop playing with people. Emotions and lying. That's why the church messed up because ain't nobody keeping it real. So that's where processing comes in. One, and I'm, I'm using my situation. When I really, about two two months in the marriage, because you see, I like to peep stuff out, you know. I like to sit back and just peep. I talk a lot, but I be peeping. So I say, I say wait a minute, he be lying? I say, you think I'm crazy? I say, didn't he have a lust spirit? I say, Lord, I mercy, what have I gotten myself into? And before I knew it, and I'm, I have never said this before, 
But you know what? I'm going to. When I left my husband, my husband had 11 women. Y'all heard me, 11. And they were all younger than me, young girls. One, one across the street. I I was so hurt. I was like, how the, how the heck he had that much energy? Y'all ain't ready for me. I had to go to the doctor, make sure I didn't have anything. It was, I couldn't believe it. And then God said, wait a minute, Deanna. I showed you this from the gate, who this man was. But you thought that you can change him. And I was like, God, you're right. It wasn't you, it was me. I'm going somewhere. When God processes people, he matures them. He gets them ready for their mate. He gets all that stuff out of them, all the lying, all the lust, all the temptation, all the wondering eyes. Because the wondering eye, that's lust. Don't y'all understand what's happening here? But because you so fine and you got it like that, you be thinking you can change that man. And then when you end up crying, then you want to fight him, cut him, stab him, shoot him. Y'all know how y'all be acting. Because one thing. I'm 52, so I know what I'm talking about. You want to get somebody, hit them in their emotions. Honey, you'll do what you say you'll never do. You'll come out the box. I don't care if it's a doctor, lawyer, whomever. You'll come out the box. I, I, I saw something, and it hurt me to my heart. And it was a friend of a friend, an ambassador in another country. This man had never did nothing. Y'all, this, this story hurt me. I don't know why I'm telling y'all this. Maybe this was somebody. <sighs> That, that one hurt. That man, he was high in his country too. And he married this common woman, trying to change her, trying to give her a better life. And so they got married. They actually moved to the States. They moved to Florida. And what ended up happening is that she kept cheating with the other guy. So he found some emails that said that their son was the other guy's son. And this had went on for a year and a half. And he knew, but he was thinking, okay, she's going to change. He had gave her a great life, nice home. They were actually city officials. I won't say the state or not like, I mean, the town, because I don't want people to figure it out. But one night, he snapped and killed her. Y'all. And he kept saying, I, I didn't mean to. I, I, I didn't mean to. I, I didn't mean to. Are y'all listening to me this morning? Because that's how it's happening. I don't believe people just just kill people. There are some people that are cold-blooded that are devils, yeah. But there are 55% that something they snapped. Something hurt them so bad that they didn't know how to they didn't know how to control their emotions, their anger, their rage. What am I saying? Stop marrying people that are not processed. That's not ready. Because all you got is a big situation that could end up in death or jail or both of y'all. Because there are some times where they kill both of y'all. Which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Let God process people. Why y'all think I ain't married now? I'm waiting. I I had actually, there was somebody just last weekend. And he was attractive and I looked at him. And after five minutes of conversation, I said, this ain't nothing but a man, child. This man better go about his business. I am not trying to raise no child. You ain't ready for me. I'm a whole woman of God. And yeah, you look nice and, and whatever, whatever. But thank you, Lord. He want me to be very explicit. Quit choosing because of sexual uh, capacity. Quit choosing because they're fine. Quit choosing because your parents know each other or, or everybody think y'all go good together. Quit choosing because pastor put y'all together. Quit choosing because this was. Go to God and God alone. God going to tell you. That's why some of you are hurting now. And secondly, God says, quit sleeping with him. Because now soul ties. Let me read something. Let me read something about a soul tie. I got some information I, I want to share with y'all. And I'm not trying to be derogatory this morning. It's just that when God wake me up 
And he pulled my coattail, like I said, I'm going to pull y'all's because that's what this is all about. I'm not great. I'm just a deliverer. I'm just a messenger. And trust me, everything that I ever tell y'all, it applies to me too. I don't get away with nothing. I'm just, oh, I'm listening too. I'm talking, but I'm listening because I don't. <laughs> so let me tell y'all what God told me to say. Okay. First Corinthians thirteen eleven he says, When I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. When y'all meet these men or women that act like a child, y'all need to say, you know what? <laughs> God bless you. Have a nice life. You can't raise no child. God has to do that. And, and some of y'all and they could be fifty and sixty year old children. Never grew up in the mentality part. Still playing games. Y'all should know when they still want to dress like a teenager. A man dressed like a man and a woman dressed like a woman. And I'm going to say something. You older women, you dressing like that and then call yourself a cougar. And then when they use you, you're crying. Yeah, I say what I say. But look what you just did to that young man. You, you know young men like money. And so he'll get high. Oh, damn, ready for me. He'll get high and have sex with you and then leave you. Mm -hmm. And die you crying. How can God send you a real man when you're doing that, sister? Come on, brother. Because some of you guys do the same thing, you older men. Be after these young. I see y'all riding around in y'all trucks uh, looking for a young um, thrill. And, and, and then how can God send you a wife? Oh, you just a trick. That's who you is? Okay. Let me continue. Typically, soul ties are say to come from sex. It is the physical act of giving yourself to another person that makes you vulnerable to such a connection. Now you know when you have soul ties. When y'all have soul ties, that's why it's hard. So the best thing to do is not to have sex with them. Get to know that person as a person. I know some of y'all don't want to hear this because I'm going to be honest with you. This, 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 this hitting everybody. You can't in the church, out the church, on the street, in the street, in the home, out the home. Because one thing I know, and y'all can't tell me nothing. People are freaky deaky. Even in white collar, blue collar. They don't know how to control their spiritual sexual desire. Notice what I say, spiritual sexual desire. When God made love, he made it holy and good. So it's not a bad thing. But when you twist it into perverseness, then it becomes whatever you want it to be. What's your pleasure? Hmm. So anyway, however, in a violent a volatile, hostile, or unhealthy relationships like sex causes you to tie your soul to someone, listen to this, who is disempowering and damaged. Most people look for vulnerable people. And that's when the abuse starts. Men and women of God, I pray y'all listening to me. You have to have self-control. Ain't nobody want to be lonely. I don't care what you say. If you do, you, you, you need counseling. Because the Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. But you have to wait on God. And most people don't like to wait on God. And then y'all be trying to put provisions. Well, if you don't do this and you don't do that, bye, see ya. You, go, you, go, you don't want who God wants for you. If you really look back, and I'm going to challenge every last one of you. If you look back on your life, God sent your true husband and wife. But you was like... I don't like her. I don't like him. Look at him. And you know what you should have did? Put on your spiritual eyes and look again. That would have been just what you needed. But it didn't come packaged like you, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And all God don't think like we think. Cause we look, we see something fine and sometimes they'll be the worst, the worst ones. Y'all acting like I'm crazy. Y'all know what I'm talking about up on here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on, I got a couple of more points. 
And I'm just trying to help you, not judge you, because remember, everything I tell y'all is for Deanna too. Okay. All right. Ephesians 6, 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, demons, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So even in the heavenly realms, you got some demons. Yeah, because they come from heaven. So they pretend the angel of darkness transforms himself to the angel of light because I got to say something. Y'all be thinking Christians. Oh Lord, please forgive me. And let me know. Let me know if I can say this like this because I don't want to say nothing. Everybody that say Lord, Lord is not of God. Y'all gotta watch Christians. I'm a Christian. You gotta watch them. You gotta watch them. You gotta watch them. I say what I say. Test the spirit by the spirit. Quit getting hurt, young women. Quit getting hurt, men. Let me tell you how I do it. I'm going to get up off of here. I always ask for confirmation. And I ain't going to lie. Sometimes it hurts because God be like, mm -mm, Deanna. I listen now. After that last time, I listen. I don't care how fine, how much I like. I'm listening to God. If it ain't God, I don't want it. Because you're going to be crying. That's why, that's why some of y'all losing your virginity. Lo losing your mind. Losing... <sighs> And don't be second to nobody. Let me tell you something. Then I'm going to get off of here. I remember when I was um, leaving my husband. Because he was also abusing me. When I had the cancer, he was beating me. Like, I almost died. And I, and this ain't no exaggeration. You know people exaggerate? No, he almost killed me. If it had not been for his little girl running in there, I'd have died. And so that was another big red flag. But anyway, I remember God saying, would I send somebody to hurt you, Deanna? And I said, no. He said, you're the apple of my eye. Why would I send somebody to hurt you? And I pray that that statement alone helps the men and the women. Because abuse can come in any form. Mental, hollering at people. And that's another thing. Y'all holler too much. Why y'all hollering? You can talk to somebody without hollering. All that hollering. Quit hollering at your children too. All that hollering. Nobody want to be around nobody like that. Learn to communicate effectively. Okay, but remember that would God send somebody to hurt you, deceive you, use you, abuse you, talk to you crazy? I have loved potential. We're going to say potentials. Men that I really liked. And I was saying the last year, I really liked them. But when I start seeing red flags and trying to, and I'm going to keep it transparent, trying to put me down or something, I say, oh. I ain't gonna lie, y'all know I'm crazy. I said, oh, you got the right one. I snapped. I said, oh no, you are definitely not the one for me. And, and he didn't do but that much. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. The man or woman that God will send for you will understand your flaws, will understand you're a little crazy, but I love you. Will understand, baby, let's talk respectively. Well, understand, don't touch me, and I ain't going to touch you. We ain't going to play them hand games. Y'all young people do that too much. That's how people getting killed. Stop that. You don't touch nobody. Nobody touch you. That's the rules. Y'all play too much. Y'all young people trip, and older men too. Keep your hand to yourself. She she, she, she had a mom, my dad, or still do. You ain't got no business putting your hands on nobody. Hello? <laughs> I would tell a story, but it would be recorded. I can't tell y'all that story. But it happened one time, last time, too. I bet you he never did it again. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That was in the past. That was 30 years ago. I'm just saying. What? <laughs> I don't know y'all think I'm crazy. Whatever. All I'm saying is, God would never send you something to hurt you. Love you. Love you enough to wear. No. If it doesn't give you peace, it ain't God. If it doesn't love you, it ain't God. If you got a word where they at, that ain't God. If they got two or three women, that ain't God. It, it, it. Y'all better quit listening to Betty Wright talking about a piece of man is better than no man. Y'all better stop that. That's not God. God said, I sent somebody to bless you. I love you all the days of your life and treat you like the man or the woman that you are 
And I'm going to tell you that last key. If they love God for real, they're going to know how to treat you. So that's the key. Oh, I got another key too. If they don't know how to treat their mother, you better run. Because anytime a man cannot honor their own mother who birthed them, they cannot honor you. That's damaged goods. They need counseling. Yeah, I see what I see. Because some of y'all, that's what's happening to y'all. That man, he never treated his mama right. How are you going to treat you right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I I'm on one this morning. Okay, well, let me make sure that's all God told me to say. And I'm going to get up out of here. <laughs> because um, the devil is a lie. The devil ain't just taking our people. Huh? I'm sick of it. I think he's slick. And, and, and he comes like a slickster. And don't be greedy for money with me, because that's how, that's how a lot of y'all are getting it, too. But he got money, so he can bop you on your head because he got money. Girl, you is two kinds of crazy. Yeah, I'm saying just like that. Two kinds. Love you. And wait on God, my sister and my brother. And it's not the best, y'all. I try to make y'all feel bad, but I'm so tired of people getting killed funny or getting hurt funny and misused and then the kids got to suffer. Y'all, that's not fair. Don't be so selfish. Okay, that's all. I'm not trying to, you know. So, that is all God told me to say today. For now. Alright. So, God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. God bless.